find you? Because there's two. We're using John, okay. not Matthew. Oh, wait, I guess that doesn't matter for you. But I'll be that one. Roman. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Which is what I'm preaching on, so okay. do a good job. Okay. All right. Good morning. So many of you look so festive in your Reformation red today. It's exciting. As much as I love green, it is exciting to be wearing a a little bit different color today. So let's go ahead and stand and greet each other with the peace of the Lord.
We make our beginning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in His mercy, has given uh, His Son to die for you, and for His sake, forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I will speak of your testimony before kings, O Lord, and shall not be put to shame. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. Come, O children, listen to me. O sweet you fear the Lord. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will speak of your testimonies before kings, O Lord, and I'll not be put to shame. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. 
Keep us steadfast in your grace and truth. Protect and deliver us in times of temptation. Defend us against all enemies. And grant to your church your saving peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading on this Reformation Sunday is from Revelation chapter 14. Then I saw another angel flying directly overhead with an, in, with an eternal gospel to proclaim to those who dwell on earth, to every nation and tribe and language and people. And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory because the hour of his judgment has come and worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea and the springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. The gradual is from Psalm 48. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God. Walk about Zion, go around her, number her towers, consider well her ramparts, go through her citadels, that you may tell the next generation that this is God, our God, forever and ever. The epistle is from Romans chapter 3. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law, so that every mouth may be stopped and the whole world may be held accountable to God. For by works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. But now the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ, whom God put for, forward as a propitiation by his blood, to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in his divine forbearance he had passed over former sins. It was now to show, it, it was to show his righteousness at the the present time so that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Then what becomes of our boasting it is excluded. By what kind of law? By law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Built on a rock, the church shall. 
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 8th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are offspring of Abraham and have never been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say, you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is slave to sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son remains forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated and we invite the children to come forward at this time. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Good. So, Emmy, you want to scoot in a bit closer? You can join the group up here. So, do you guys know that we have a church bulletin board? Have you seen it? It's just out there. And what, what, what kind of things do you think you would find on the church bulletin board? Important stuff, sure. Yeah, important stuff. You could say it's it's a big spot for announcements. There's a big blue paste, paste poster board. There we go up there with pictures from VBS. There was a sign up sheet to come help out last night with trunk or treat. There's a sign up sheet to help out with the altar guild. There's LWML stuff. There's LCMS stuff. There's all kinds of stuff up there. Okay, and so, what do you? Th if you wanted to put something up there, it would need to be pretty important, right? Well, not all the time did people always use a bulletin board made out of cork or whatever material it is. At one point, about 500 years ago, you know what they did? They used the front doors of the church. Yeah. They'd go nail stuff onto the doors of the church. But it was the exact same principle. It was things that were important. Well, on October 31st, 1517, a guy named Martin Luther, does that sound familiar? Yeah, yeah good. Nailed 95 theses or 95 problems that the church had. You guys know what any of these were? Yes, sir. I think it's like the fact that you have to pay money to go to heaven. Oh, my good little Luther right there. Yeah, you have to pay money to go to heaven. It's called indulgences. Yep, there was that. Anybody know what else they said? Do you guys like hearing God's word? Do you like hearing it in English? Yeah. Yeah? What if you could only hear it in Latin? You speak Latin, right? No? <laughs> no? 
No, me neither. Yeah, so he said that people should be able to hear God's word in their own language. And he also said that when we talk about Jesus, when we talk about his forgiveness for us, do we have to work for it? No. No, it's given to us as a free gift. And he wanted everybody to know that. And that was his whole point. There was clearly a lot of other points because we just named about four or five, right? So we got about 90 to go, but I don't think I can hold your attention for that long, can I? No, didn't think so. Plus, they all kind of not his, not Danny's. Yeah, that's okay. I understand. So those were some of the big things. There were some other things in there, but his whole point was to uh, have it so that we could hear God's word in our own language, so that we'd know that God's gift to us through his son was a free gift and that, um, that we didn't have to pay to go to heaven. And that's what we celebrate today and every October, the last weekend in October, so that we, we get to give thanks to the Lord that he sent his servant so that we could hear God's message of grace and mercy and peace through his son for us. So let's go ahead and pray and thank the Lord for all that he does for us. You want to hold your hands, Danny? Ah, you can hold your siblings' hands. That works, too. If you guys would repeat after me. <laughs> Dear Jesus, we thank you for all the blessings that you give us. Namely, your death on the cross and your resurrection to offer us salvation, forgiveness, and eternal life. But we also thank you that you sent your servant, Martin Luther, and all the reformers so that we could hear this good news in our own language. We pray all of this in your holy name. Amen. Thank you, guys. You can head back to your seats now.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, through His Son, our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Did you ever have an experience where you were over at a friend's house as a child and and you both got caught doing something you weren't supposed to do? Whenever these sorts of experiences are portrayed on TV, the, the, the child whose home it is is in a world of hurt, but the other one gets off scot-free with the, with the parents saying something like, well, they're not my child, I can't do anything about them, right? That's at least what the, the TV shows. But I don't know about you, but I can tell you that not once, not ever once, did I have that experience. In fact, these situations turned out to be twice as bad for the visiting kid, for us who were visiting. Because first off, we would get the talk from our friend's parents, which would always include, I'm not mad, just disappointed. And then, and then by the time we got home, our parents would know what we had done. And we would get the same talk from them as well. well depending on your parent, they might leave out the, the not and the just disappointed, right? But that that depends on your parents. Unlike what the TV suggested, in these sorts of situations, we as kids, or I as a child, was under two types of law. I was under the law at my friend's house, and I was under the law at my own house. We were twice under the law. And speaking of being twice under the law today, we are celebrating Reformation Sunday. And just over 500 years ago, it was not just children who lived under this terror, but it was all Christians. First, they faced the biblical truth of the fact that we are all conceived and born in sin. That we commit sins every day, both known and unknown, of our lives. And that even just one, just one of these sins is enough to condemn us to hell and everlasting uh, damnation. Yet, we give all praise and thanks to our God who sent His Son to bear our punishment for this on the cross. To perfectly fulfill uh, the law in our stead. Not to remove it, but to take our place and our punishment in His most perfect life and His most excruciating death. And after, and to offer, excuse me, us everlasting life, not eternal damnation that we deserve because of our sin through his resurrection. For by Adam, death came came for all people. But in Christ, the faithful have new life, first in heaven, and then in the new heaven and new earth at his return. This is the law that all people have and do live under. And it's found on every page of God's word. And it's also the good news of our salvation, forgiveness, and life eternal that is also found throughout His Word as well. We see this all throughout our reading, especially in verses 21 and 22. Here in 21, uh, St. Paul tells us, But now the righteousness of God has been manifest, manifested apart from the law, although the law and prophets prophets bear witness to it. The law shows us our sin, and it shows us our need for our Savior. But the other half states, the righteousness of God through faith in in Jesus Christ for all who believe. The gospel shows us our Savior, Jesus Christ, and His saving work for us. So now we are simultaneously both under the law and free from the law. For we still bear the consequences of sin, the earthly consequences of sin, and we are not under it 
because we do not bear the eternal consequences which have been removed in our Savior's death and resurrection. This has, as we said, been the case for all people who put their faith and hope in our Savior, both before He came, before His first appearance, and for those of us who eagerly and earnestly pray for Christ's second return on, or his return on the last day. We have all labored under the law, under, uh, under the consequences of both our first parent's sin and our own sin. Yet, our brothers and sisters in Christ who lived some 500 years ago and for a good amount of time before that as well, labored under another type of law. The law of good works being necessary for salvation. The idea that they had to earn their salvation through good works. The difference between this and the previous law is that this is not what is taught in the Bible. In fact, our readings today show us the exact opposite of this idea. Verse 20 says, For by the works of the law, no human being will be justified in his sight, since through the law comes knowledge of sin. No human beings will be justified in their, in their works. And St. Paul doubles down in verse 28 when he writes, For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from the works of the law. We are justified not in our works, but in Christ's works. We are justified in sola fide, faith alone, or by sola fide, faith alone. In sola gratia, by grace alone. And this is found in sola scriptura, scripture alone. Now, of course, we need to take a, a quick time out because we would be remiss if we did not address the elephant in the room. Good works are mentioned throughout the Bible in a good light, especially in the Apostle James's writings. But what we find there is that good works are not necessary for salvation, but they are a necessary outcome of salvation. They have nothing to do with our justification. Instead, they are a result of it. And once again, we give all thanks and praise to our triune God that he sent his servant, Martin Luther, and countless other reformers to bring this biblical truth back to life. So that we may all know that Christ's death covers all sins and offers us salvation and forgiveness. And that his resurrection offers us eternal life. Just as our Heavenly Father sent his Son some 2,000 years ago to offer his grace and mercy to us, so too did he send his servants uh, to uncover this truth and bring it back to light some 500 years ago. These men and women were not sent for our salvation, but so that we could read God's word in our own language and we could hear it spoken in our own tongue. So that we would not try to labor under the law of good works but to know that we are given salvation in sola fide, in faith alone, by sola gratia, by grace alone, which is found in sola scriptura, scripture alone. And so that we may offer good works in the Spirit as a joyful response to this good, great news of our Savior and all that he has done for us on the cross and through the tomb. Today, we celebrate the Reformers. But we also remember that this was not so that they could boast in the good that they had done, but that so the saving message of Christ 
could be heard in the fullness and truthfulness of what is taught to us in the Scripture. They did this not for their own gain or honor, but so that the grace of Christ would increase and multiply to the whole world. They suffered threats and death so that true faith in Christ would be spread all over. The reformers adhered to their calls so that we might not labor under the double laws of sin and good works, but find our hope, joy, and peace in our Savior who has set us free. So we give all thanks and praise to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit for our justification, grace, and faith, which He alone has given us and allowed us to, he, to be heard and taught and preached fully. Amen. Now may the peace which surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand for the prayers of the church. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, we give you thanks and praise for all your goodness and tender care, especially on this Reformation Festival. Thank you for the gift of your Son, and for the revelation of your will and grace. Implant your word in us, and give us fertile hearts to keep it and bring forth good fruit in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, keep us steadfast in your word, and prevent our wayward hearts from following false gospels that lead us away from you. Provide your church with faithful pastors who preach in purity and joy, that we are saved by your grace alone, through faith alone, because of Christ alone. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty God, you have had great power, and yet you act with mercy. Teach those who lead us to use power rightly for the preservation of order, the accomplishment of justice, the protection of life, and the defense of the weak. Give us wise, godly, and faithful leaders who will follow your commands with, with, uh, and serve with integrity. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, keep this nation under your care. Bless the leaders of our land, that we may be a people at peace among ourselves. A blessing to the other nations of the earth. Grant that we may choose trustworthy leaders, contribute to wise decisions for the general welfare, and serve you faithfully in our generations. 
Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, remember all who face adversity of any kind. We pray especially for Cliff Brown, Thurwood Dreyer, Lisa Key, who is a friend of the Londonbergs, Hank Rosen, Maria Ripley, Edwin Londonberg, Dottie Winnicky, Kate Bartlett, Albert Swerlick, Sandy Jorgensen, Clara Bodie, Sandra Rosen, Martha Nader, Marsha Perkins, Brenda Lawrence, Mary Eichsman, and uh, Ariston Lightfoot. Lord, we pray that you would be with all of these, no matter their afflictions or adversities. Comfort them by your Holy Spirit, that they would acknowledge their afflictions as the manifestations of your fatherly will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We also give you thanks and praise for the blessings that you bestow upon us, uh, for the birthdays of Jonathan Reeves and Edwin Lundenberg, and for the birth of Luca Ray. We thank you, Lord, not only that you have opened the scripture to us and its truth to us, but we thank you that you have um, given us these and so many more blessings. Lord, in your mercy. We also pray for those who who grieve and mourn at this time. We pray for the family and friends of Ralph Sparks and for the family and friends of Zach Joy, both who have been called to their heavenly home. Lord, we we give you thanks and praise that, that these, our brothers in Christ, are now with you, that they no longer labor under the law of sin, but have been fully given the promises that you give us in your Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through his death on the cross and resurrection. Help us to find joy and not grief and sorrow in this this blessing that they have received. But comfort us during these difficult times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we continue to pray for all of those who serve in first responders and military positions. Uh, We give you thanks and praise for the work Lucas Cantu, Mike Mirage, and Mike Mabry do. We ask that you would continue to watch over them, that you would bring them home to their families and homes safe and sound each night, and that you would give us leaders who would make decisions that are appropriate, especially for those who put themselves in harm's way for us. Lord, in your mercy... Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you have given us the certainty of sins forgiven in your Son, set forth as the propitiation by his blood to be received, for us to be received by faith. So lead us to repentance and faith now and always. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Preserve your church, O Lord, and each of us as members of Christ's body that we may not surrender the true gospel for any reason, but be kept in this faith and fear throughout the days of our earthly pilgrimage, until the day when we and all your people shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ to receive the reward you have prepared for us and for all who have loved his um, appearing. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace today and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Melody Kingsbury with um, Board of Evangelism and Renee Reeves with um, with Social Ministry. I wanted to thank you all for um, coming yesterday and all those who supported us in this event. It was successful, and we couldn't have done that without the help that we received from the donations and who all participated. Thank you for the Men of Peace for all of their help and providing the community um, with their generosity and um, hot dog meals. Um, we also sub um, provided the community with little outreach prayer cards for Halloween for the children, um, as well as you know little promotional um, items, um, trinkets, as well as gift cards, um, free um, meals from Canes, which is our biggest supporter. So we're thankful for that. Um, and one of the things that we liked was people telling us how they felt the warmth when they came here. They felt that um, they felt the love here, and they liked that they they could come here every year. A few of them did ask about the times. Um, I told them we you know we have service here every Sundays, so you know they're more than welcome. So we're looking forward for them to come with their children. Um, and also, <laughs> the for the, all those who supported us. Um, and the Toronto fans, we did little prizes. So we had three winners, and I just wanted to announce them, and we'll, um, Renee and I will present them afterwards. But So we have three winners, and um, our third prize goes to, um, for, to Carol for Halloween. Um, she gets a little um, kitchen um, egg trinket. The second prize goes to... Um, to Pastor and Cindy for the prince and princess. <laughs> and the first prize, which everyone loved, but, uh, went to uh, it's a, um, a family night movie basket for um, and with popcorn and all of these things. And, and um, it was a really great trunk from Yolanda for presenting for the dragons. So, <laughs> so thank you all. You know, these are little, little incentives to just let you all know that, you know, we appreciate you coming out, taking your time to help us. And, and um, when we shine, you know, the community sees that and we want them to see that. So thank you all. Hey, Melody, yeah. just off the top of your head, about how many people do you think we had? I would say roughly around six, eight hundred. You know, we had quite a few this year, um, but we did have the right amount of people. We had the right amount of um, candies. Um, we even have a little extra, so um, that worked out really great. So it was well received this year. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for all your hard work on that. Good morning. 
The youth group garage sales in two weeks on November 9th. We are taking donations of items to be sold. Please see the last page of your bulletin. And please come and shop the sale. All proceeds go to the youth group as we get ready for National Youth Gathering this summer. Thank you. Just to piggyback on what Melody was saying, um, we want to be sure and uh, make ourselves known to Canes for their, they, they generated, uh, gen donated generously to us. But uh, visit them and then Brookshire Brothers, they provided a lot of buns and, and hot dogs, so be sure and treat them with your, your money too. So uh, we want to we show our appreciation to them for sponsoring our event, so thank you very much. Don't worry, Stephen, I got canes covered. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you want to go there, that's fine, but, you know, they get quite a bit of my money. So um, we've been praying a lot for our leaders and for elections. There's some great resources here. This was an insert in your bulletin last week, but I know not everybody was here, and this time we just made it harder to read by putting it on red, right? Um, but this comes from the Lutheran Center for our Religious Liberty, and it talks about casting an informed vote, and it also has, a, uh, you can um, read through it. It's, it's a great little thing. And then they, down at the bottom, they have links, which I know it's paper, so you can't, I mean, you can click on them. It's not going to do any good. But there are links down there that you could at least type in to see the official platforms. This group also has a really great, uh, much more in-depth votering guide. If you'd like a copy of that, just let me know, and I'd be happy to get you, uh, just forward that email to you. I was really impressed with it. Um, it's quite in-depth and quite long. Uh, so that's my way of saying, remember to vote. You got a week and two days for early voting and then a week and one day, I don't know, something like that. Uh, then I do want to remind everybody that we are hosting uh, the Circuit 18, which is from, from us and Trinity Badger Ranch up to Hillsboro, out to... Um, Mart and Marlin, and then, and I guess Riesel's even farther than that, right? One of them. And then out to uh, Clifton. We are hosting it this year at 4 o'clock. And Dr. Gerald Kieschnick, a former, uh, the former Texas district president and former synod president, will be doing the, the sermon. He will be guest preaching the sermon. So we're looking forward to that, and we hope to see you all there. Uh, just a couple other reminders. It's not in the bulletin, but women of peace. Okay, same same bat time, same bat place. All right. So uh, at at our place on the first Sunday in November, right? First Sunday in November, which is also All Saints Day. And on All Saints Day, we celebrate those who have been called home in the last year. We'll have everyone that, that was a member of this church, but if you have somebody else that you would like included, I would be more, we'd be more than happy to include them in our list. Um, so if you just get me that information sometime before Tuesday so that it can be included in the bulletin, and we'd be happy to include that. Uh, so Men of Peace, Women of Peace next Sunday as well, and... I think that's it. Anything else? Oh. Oh, yes. Coffee in the narthex, Bible class opening and Bible class will be in here as well. Because it's, if you haven't been in the fellowship hall today, it's all nicely, beautifully decorated. Because there is a light meal after our service tonight. So, and that's been taken care of by the fellowship community and many of you. So hopefully we'll see you here for Bible study and for the service and for service next week and men and women of peace. And Randy, do you want to make an announcement? Next Sunday. Awesome. Anything else? I think that's... Probably way more than enough information for you to digest. So go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.